I laugh off the questions that say, well, why do you think you can become the president of the United States? My water bill right now is at $4,900. $2,000 and some odd dollars. My water bill is about $12,000. Prison come back, prison come back. Prison come back to us. All of those planes are grounded effective immediately. Okay. President Trump announced an FAA emergency order grounding all Boeing 737 MAX 8s and 9s. The decision came hours after Canada's transport minister made the same call, citing new satellite tracking data that suggested similarities between Sunday's crash in Ethiopia and another in October in Indonesia. On top of his 47-month sentence from a Virginia court for financial fraud, Paul Manafort was sentenced today by a D.C. judge to another 43 months for conspiracy and witness tampering, a total of seven and a half years. That's the least of his problems. New York has indicted Manafort on 16 counts, ranging from mortgage fraud to conspiracy. Unlike the federal crimes he's been sentenced to, state crimes can't be pardoned by the White House. California Governor Gavin Newsom signed an executive order today, suspending the state's use of the death penalty and giving a reprieve to its 737 prisoners awaiting execution, a quarter of the inmates on death row in the U.S. And now for your daily Brexit update. Britain's parliament decided they don't want to crash out of the EU without a deal in place, even though every single attempt to vote on a deal in parliament has ended the same way. The nose have it! The nose have it! The nose have it! Unlock! Vice President Joe Biden might be a little closer to maybe announcing that he'll do what everyone in America thinks he'll eventually do, run for president. I appreciate the energy you showed when I got up here. Um, uh, save it a little longer. I may need it in a few weeks. Biden would join a diverse field of 14 Democratic candidates that includes other campaign trail veterans like him. Hi, I'm Bernie Sanders. I'm running for president. Fresh-faced but experienced national lawmakers. I am running for president of the United States. Fresh-faced outsiders with a hook. I filed an exploratory committee to run for president of the United States. Industrious Midwesterners who eat salad with hair combs. To announce my candidacy for president of the United States. And as of this morning, this guy. I'm Miramar, Florida Mayor Wayne Mesa and I'm taking the first steps to establish an exploratory committee to run for president of the United States. We have so many candidates running already, all different kinds of people, all different places in the country. Why do we need another one? Well, you know, I'm not truly convinced that the solution is coming out of Washington. Um, when you really think about mayors, mayors are known to be problem solvers. Mayors are known to be closest to the people. Um, and, you know, and quite frankly, um, being in Washington for a lot of years, it's kind of hard for me to believe that sensible solutions can come out of Washington that touch people the most. Last night, Democrat Wayne Messam won his second term as mayor of Miramar, Florida, a city of 140,000 people nestled between Miami and Fort Lauderdale. Good night, everyone. Stay This morning, Mayor Messam was with his regular running group, doing his usual four-mile jog. All right, everybody have a great ride. Messam is 44. He played wide receiver at Florida State in the mid-90s and almost made it to the NFL. Now he owns a successful construction company. It's obvious that literally anyone can run for president. And in 2019, it feels like literally anyone can be president. The question is, should they? So I think about you, and you know, you have a construction business, so you build buildings, and you're a former FSU football star, so you're sort of Florida famous. I wonder, like, do you look at Donald Trump and say, hey, if he could do it, why can't I do it? The reason why I'm running is because uh, I'm living the American dream my immigrant parents came to this country for. You know, my, my father and mother um, are immigrants from Jamaica, and that's an American dream that's quite frankly, slipping away for most Americans. 
Messam is really nothing like that last guy who built buildings and then ran for president. And his path to victory isn't totally crazy. In 2018, young black candidates did surprisingly well in Democratic primaries in the South. So maybe a young black mayor from Florida that you've never heard of could make a play for the South Carolina primary if she or he could find the right message. Are you a socialist? I'm not going to answer yes or no. Listen, I'm a business owner and I'm in business to make money. However, I'm a mayor that fought for living wage and I believe health care should be a right. So is socialism good? I think solving the problems of America is what's good. It's not easy to pin Messam down on anything. How about yes or to this one? Uh, legalize marijuana. But what's most important about marijuana, I think, is the criminalization of the possession of uh, marijuana, specifically from a recreational standpoint. Look, there's a personal choice on to use it, but we should not be criminalizing people for, uh, for a drug that is widely becoming acceptable for recreational use. Messam says he's going to decide whether or not to go from exploratory committee to actual campaign by the end of the month. Before you make a decision to sign papers like you signed today, who do you talk to before you do that? Um, so I have a network of um, elected officials and peers across this country um, who um, agree that I should take this step. This is not a, a fly-by-night um, opportunity uh, to just to cast my name um, as a candidate. So I laugh off the questions that say, well, why do you think you can become the president of the United States? They said that when I ran for the Miramar City Commission. This city has never elected a black mayor before. I'm now the first black mayor of the city of Myanmar. people moving every day. What caused the other water bill? I need my water to take a bath, flush the commode. I don't cook with it, but I still need it. Sharon Parker has a fish tank, runs her bath, and washes her dishes. Her water bill is $7,000. All right. So is this where your meter is? Yeah, the meter is right here. I don't know which one is the troublemaker, but it's one of these right here. The city of Jackson started upgrading its water metering system in 2013. Now, Sharon is one of more than 20,000 people, or a third of all customers in Jackson, with delinquent water bills, ranging from a few dollars to several thousand. Right now, I'm going to the Jackson Water Company, hoping they can help me out with my bill. If they say no today, I'll be coming back home, um, getting some boxes and start packing. That's an old water meter? This is an old water meter. OK. OK. And this is solid brass. Uh -huh. And this is a mechanical device. Somebody used to have to go, and this would be in a pit about two or three feet down in the ground. That pit may have water in it when we go to this. See? And this being the new meter. Yes. Jackson's infrastructure has been crumbling for decades. So in 2013, the city signed a deal with the manufacturing juggernaut Siemens to help turn that around by upgrading its water meters, theoretically generating more revenue in the process. Bob Miller is the public works director. Siemens came in and said, your meters are running slow enough that if your meters ran accurately, you would capture enough consumption that could pay for the new meters, pay for the new software, and the installation. What Siemens is saying is, we're going to install this new system. It's going to be so efficient that you're going to save a bunch of money, and it's going to pay for itself. Exactly. That sounded pretty good. So Jackson ponied up $90 million to buy 65,000 new smart meters and a fancy new billing system, among other upgrades. It didn't work. Meters failed, 
bills went missing, often for months, and when they did arrive, they sometimes had balances in the thousands. The meters are capturing the consumption, but the consumption isn't turning into bills, and the bills aren't turning into payments. So there's a breakdown in the system. To try to change out a metering system and a billing system is like trying to change out uh, someone's heart and lungs at the same time. Who's to blame? The city, or Siemens, depends on who you ask. The city council has discussed filing a lawsuit against Siemens. This wouldn't be the first time the tech giant has been to court for water-related issues. It's settled lawsuits with other cities in the past. Siemens says it's done the work it was contracted to do and continues to interact with the city of Jackson on a regular basis to help facilitate successful operation of the metering and billing systems. In the meantime, Jackson's water department needs money. So it's sending out shutoff notices to try to collect on its bills, even if those bills are flawed. Hello, people. Hello. Mayor Chukwe Lumumba took office four years after the Siemens deal. He had a plan to make Jackson, in his words, the most radical city on the planet. Instead, he's dealing with water meters. In an ideal world, mm -hmm. what would you do to fix this? In an ideal world, water would be free. You know, if we wholesale decided to cut people off regardless of whether their bills were accurate or not, that would be a failure. If we wholesale decide that we're not going to cut anyone off, then we find ourselves in this circumstance where we have gaping holes uh, that we're unable to deal with in, in our, our budget uh, that leads the city into debt. For now, the water department is taking bills one by one. That's how a city with a 30% poverty rate and a median household income of $33,000 got here. I have a water bill for $341.35. My water bill was $2,000 and some odd dollars. I owe $2,600 and like 43 cents. My water bill right now is at $4,900. My water bill is about $12,000. I'm Sharon Parker. I'm Miss Walker. Come on yes, in. Yes, ma'am. How are you today? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing wonderful good for Monday. I went just a few minutes ago and made um, a payment. I came in... Um, How much did you pay a few minutes ago? $20, what I could. The water department says Sharon hasn't been paying on time in years. That's as common in Jackson as anywhere, especially after a years-long moratorium on water shutoffs for non-payment. It also says she has a leak on her property that she'll need to fix. So this is the amount that I was able to adjust off that bill. Okay. Okay. So that leaves you with a remaining balance of $2,773.20. Okay. okay. So is that better? That is much, 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 okay. much better. Oh, thank you. Jesus. Okay, so, so what happens next? Well, I have to come back Friday and make a payment. Start my payment plan. How much is that payment going to be? Two thirty one ten. And can Three you handle payments. that? I'm, I'm going to do the best I can. The Water Department says these problems created a $25 million shortfall during the last fiscal year. That's money Jackson could have spent on doing things like upgrading its decades-old pipes. It hopes adjustments like Sharon's will get people paying again. Do you think that the Siemens deal was a mistake? Absolutely. The whole thing? It's, it's akin to uh, someone selling you the most expensive car that they have on the lot and understanding uh, that one, you can't afford to buy it. Uh, you don't understand how to operate it. Uh, but if they can get you to purchase it, they will. And so the question now is what steps are we going to take to address and to, to remedy this? Tibetan Buddhists around the world marched this week, commemorating the 60th anniversary of an uprising, brutally squashed by Chinese military, that forced the Dalai Lama and his followers into exile. These days, Tibet is considered one of the least free places in the world. 
That's because the Communist Party has developed sophisticated methods of micromanaging the plateau. Today, one of the prime requirements for every monks and nuns is that they should be loyal to the Communist Party before they are loyal to their faith. So whether it's in terms of uh, people's freedom of movement, people's uh, language, study, cultural preservation, everything is being dictated by the Chinese uh, Communist Party. In 1995, China kidnapped the six-year-old successor to the Dalai Lama, replacing him with their own party-approved Lama. He is now one of the leaders of the Buddhist Association of China, which helps present China as a friendly superpower to its neighbors. It's not just ironic that China's atheist leadership is fostering religious ties with its neighbors. It's also smart. Buddhists make up a huge proportion of the population in countries that China wants to connect to its Belt and Road Initiative, a multi-billion dollar project to dominate global trade. One goal? to get better connected to the oil-rich Middle East. So in the last decade, they've spent $2.5 billion on building oil and gas pipelines through Myanmar, directly connecting China to the Indian Ocean. In that same period, China actively worked to improve religious ties with Myanmar, a country that is 88% Buddhist. They've shared important relics with Myanmar's temples, agreed to build a Buddhist association center in the capital, and even signed an official declaration of friendly religious relations whatever that's worth. China is now trying to cut billions more in port and dam deals with Myanmar's government. China's use of Buddhist diplomacy is significant because several of these countries are apprehensive of this giant power, whether the loans they are taking from China will drive them into a dead trap. The most recent example of that is Sri Lanka. The country's president gave the Chinese a contract to build a billion-dollar port in his hometown, after they helped him and the country's Buddhist majority win a decades-long civil war. The Sri Lankan president was convinced the port would make his supporters rich, but it didn't. And just eight years later, Sri Lanka was signing away a 99-year lease on a port located on one of the world's busiest shipping lanes as repayment. Now, Sri Lanka's experience has become a cautionary tale for several other South Asian countries. The thing is, no other country has been able to match China. Nepal might be the biggest benefactor. In 2011, it took a $3 billion loan to build the Buddha's hometown into a modern-day pilgrimage hub. Since then, China has become Nepal's largest foreign investor. And up until last year, Nepal banned its own citizens from celebrating the birthday of the Dalai Lama, the Buddhist that China hates the most. In all these countries, you find that the public feels that, uh, well, if we want improved infrastructure, it is only the Chinese who are willing to extend loans. So yes, there is concern, but there is no other alternative. My name is Pablo Ramos Gonzalez. My name is Ayo. I'm Joshua. I'm Gilles. My name is Seth Hosseini. And I want Britain to remain in the EU because I believe that people should be together and not apart. I cannot believe there's just the end. Oh no. There's just weeks to go until Brexit. And the Reunion Boys, a Dutch boy band, don't want Britain to say bye, bye, bye. They don't want it that way. They want Britain back for good. You see where this is going. The group's first single, Britain Come Back, has more than 350,000 views on YouTube. They might not be as popular as One Direction, but it's enough to justify a trip to Liverpool using their sculpted facial hair and chiseled abs to make one last appeal to the United Kingdom to stop Brexit. (laughs) That that was big. That was was big. You were such a good hype woman. I I was. was. (laughs) Like most boy bands, the Reunion Boys are the creation of an impresario. Dutch visual artist Julia Veldman thought a boy band would be both an ironic statement and a real way to open people's hearts. She's funding the project out of her own pocket, with support from a small art grant and a Kickstarter. 
politicians are doing certain sort of charade. They're just going to work every day to be on stage and be the funniest guy in the room or something, while people are going to suffer. It's really sad, yeah, really sad. It's still affecting you now. I yeah, think. now it, it starts to show how much people will get hurt by this. Julia was serious enough about the project that she made sure the Brunian boys weren't just pretty faces. Most people would assume that a boy band wouldn't know so much mm. about politics or Brexit. So I'm just going to fire some questions at you and see how you respond. Okay? Right. Question number one. What is the customs union? Oh, that's a union in which uh, all EU countries can trade freely with each other. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> Next one. What is the backstop agreement? Ooh, that prevents, uh, if, the, if the Brexit goes through, that a hard border will exist between Northern Ireland and Ireland. Final question. Oh. What is Michelle Barnier's title? Is she like a duchess or something? He. 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 Oh, he. Michel. Oh, oh, Michel. Michel. Uh, Michel. Uh, yeah, like French. <laughs> Ooh. Um, yeah, he's the EU yet. negotiator. Uh, yeah, 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 very good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, sorry, like the we should have known. He's the chief negotiator. Yeah. How do I'm going to give you a point five for that one. So you've got a serious <laughs> message behind yeah, yeah. the humor and yeah, the laughter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, but like, how can you reach people by being all boring and serious? Like, how, how, how are you going to reach them? You know? You're a politician. It's, it's funny, but I mean, that's how the way you can actually open up a conversation. It was an emotional decision and not a very wise one and not a very, very small one, uh, a very smart one. Some people in Europe, though, might say, well, if they want to leave, they voted to leave, let them go. Yeah. Why do you want Britain to It's stay not just Britain's uh, yeah. laws. United Kingdom's mm. right. It's not just U UK's laws, it's also our laws, because we, we, we are allies. We get stronger by being together, and if, if yeah. we part, they're going to go be worse off, and we are as well. At a non-profit event called Rock for Europe, the Brunion boys were able to show off their knowledge of Brexit. Join us and shape the future. The Brunion boys! Thank you. Hello, 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 beautiful people. Unfortunately, they also sang. I cannot believe this is the end. Oh no. Britain, come back. Britain, come back. Britain, come back to us. It's now we make you uh, change uh, your mind. We'll always be connected. Our lives are intertwined. You can't change your cause without remorse. Look at what you leave behind. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The reunion boys. Mm -hmm. All the treaties we have together. Mm -hmm. No one's gonna treat you better, better. You can still have the, the real, real deal. deal. Show them, Pablo. Ooh. Show them what the real deal is. Yeah. Woo! Thank you. There will be people who say, actually, Brexit is super serious, it's a big issue, and you're making a joke out of it. Uh -huh. It's a bit patronizing. Let's put it in perspective. Yeah. What are the politicians doing right now? Are they making any progress? Is Theresa May coming back with great trade deals? Is there anything substantial going on that, compared to us, is more productive? Prison, come back to us. Can we make you change your mind? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Reunion boys. Thank you very much.